Hiya, good evening. It's Mandy Jane from Imagine Those Crafts. Welcome to our regular Sunday night. And today we've got a little project for you. So I've kept it nice, quick, easy steps for you. I will go ahead and tell you. I'm not 100% today, I'm afraid. I've got some dental problems going on and my whole face is all swollen. Um, so bear with me if I have to have drinks in between, but bear with me and I can't really talk that. My mouth is quite stiff today, so just in case you think I've gone odd, I haven't. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll get the glass so I can't see what you're saying. So let's have a look. Say, hi, Angela. Hi, Alison. Hi, Linda. Hi, Faith. Thank you for joining me. Um, as I say, nice, quick, easy step for you today. I really want to finish off some of my glass my glassware collection so we've done them um, we've done a plate haven't we we've done little plates and i showed you on the show so i really want to show you um sort of a couple of techniques onto a a vase when i say vase what i really mean is a beer glass <laughs> so i was out local shopping um in the shop uh what they call what i think all over the country what and i went to get some plants to be honest and um well i've seen these and i thought i'm looking for a vase and when I seen this, I couldn't believe my luck to be honest. So here we go. This is a two and a half pint beer glass. <laughs> Who drinks two and a half pints in one go? I don't know. Um, but anyway, it's a two and a half pint beer glass. I thought, oh, what a nice elegant shape for a vase. Um, and they're only 99p each. <laughs> I was thinking, I couldn't believe it. I said, I'll have those. They went into my basket. But again, it's great how you can look around and find these things. And then you can make what's 99p to, you know, just normal glass, glass beer glass to anyone else. We can make it into a luxury vase and give it as a gift or we can sell it or we can do anything we'd like with it. So I thought we'd play with that. Um, I just thought it was a really good buy. It was a really good find. So I'm going to talk you through a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to use a couple of products that um, aren't available on the website. They're from My Crafty Stash. Um, it's something I would like you to have, but at the moment I can't get them for you. Um, or one of them you may already have from last last year when um, Stephanie launched it with the gilding paints. But I'll talk about that as we go through. Um, but the idea is the same. So we're going to be playing with our hybrid metallics. I'm going to be playing and some rice paper. So I've gone through my rice papers and I've taken that rice paper from, we had a home decor collection called accessories and I've used the papers um, cut the papers from that because that's the ones I had left. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go down now. Quick hellos again for everybody. Oh, thank you ever so much for joining. Hiya, Tina. Hiya, Jan. Hi, Celia. Hi, Janice. Teresa. Emma. Oh, hiya, Maz. Ali. Karen. Helen. Oh, thank you all. And Wendy and Joan. Thank you all for joining me. So I'm going to take you down now. Downstairs. Okay. To the overhead. There we go. I hope it's not quite straight, but there we go. So... Hello, there we go. So what I'm working, as I've shown before, is this is just a two and a half pint beer glass. But I thought it was going to be really sort of elegant. I am going to get some tissue out so you can see what I'm doing as I'm going along. So I'm going to get some kitchen roll out to protect my glass as I'm working. I also need that as well to mop up because you know how messy I am. I will be using the hair dryer, so I'll warn you now ahead of time I will mute in between when I'm drying. But I'm deafen you. <laughs> so here we have my glass now. So we've got two and a half pint glass. I'm using um, the hybrid metallics and I'm using the antique gold. And I've also got then the Dora hybrids. These have got a real metal flake in them, so these will be a real flash of colour. So I'm also using the Dora hybrid because we can use them together. They're all water-based products, so they all work over together. And I'm also going to, hi Lillian, I'm also be using the silver um, Dora Metallics. And these are hybrids that all go, go onto multi-surfaces. You can put them onto anything. Glass, wood, um, fabric, leather, you name it, you can put it onto it. Okay, so we'll be using those colours. I'll just tip these up without spilling the paint. <laughs> so that's the colour palette we're working with. Yeah. I've also got... I'll wrap these up so I wouldn't lose them. So i cut them all up. So, and then I've just got a couple of bits and bobs I cut out from rice papers I had left over from one of my collections. So I've just cut out some birds, cut out part of a clock. You can see where I've just ripped out because the bit I had left and a cut of butterflies from another paper. So I'm just using what I had, okay? But it just, I just thought it was fun to do. And I'm also using, um, you may see me use on the show the other day. This is um, a, a stamp from our mixed media texture stamp collection. And I love this because 
If you're working onto curved surfaces or aren't, aren't flat, then I'm going to use my hands. I won't be using the block. I only use the block to store it on. <laughs> okay. So we're going to be using that. And I've also got some stays on ink. Now I've got um, stays on stone grey, basically because I haven't got a, my blacks too dry, so I can't use it. And you need, when you're stamping onto glass, you need a nice, um, a nice sort of newish pad because you just get a better. Uh, um, a better image okay and we're using stays on because stays on goes under glass so and it's a permanent ink okay so that's a solvent based ink so right so what we're going to do first is you're going to clean your glass first i've given this a quick clean so you clean your glass first and then the first thing we're going to do okay is we are going to hi catherine and um, we're going to um stamp on onto this but we're going to stamp on the inside okay so i've got my stays on here so remember when you get a stays on if you never used it before it has a protective inner cover in here you don't throw it away you want to keep that because it's solvent based it stops it drying out so always keep that never throw that away so what I'm going to do first of all there we go. I'm going to ink up the stamp you can see I'm not inking at all I'm just inking in the centre really but you ink any bits you want we give it a nice good ink I'm going to do this a couple of times and I'm taking it off my block okay and this is what I do see is I fold it then because we're going to pop this inside our glass, okay? So I'm going to hold that, pop it inside my glass, yeah? And then, I turn it over then, and then I'm just going to push down on that stamp. So I'm just going to roll it, really, because it's just the easy way. I'm not after anything, so it doesn't have to be perfect, because you're not going to be able to read this. And then I'm just going to unroll it and bring it out. If you can see there, you can see the beginnings of the stamping. So we're going to do that again. Okay, so again, I'm just inking this. I'm gonna give it a nice dab. Yeah. And again, I'm just gonna turn it around. I'm gonna pop it inside. There you go. And I'm just gonna put some pressure on the inside. This is where I just roll my glass, really. Okay, because you, know, you can put pressure on both sides then. Okay. And then I'm gonna unroll that there. There you go. So you can see. We're getting our stamped detail inside our glass. So I'm going to carry on with that. I'm going to turn it around now. And we're just going to ink it again. Okay. Again, I'm just for it doesn't matter if it's upside down, back to front, it doesn't matter. This is just for detail in the background. Pop it in, and I'm just going to give that a little twizzle on my hands there. I'm just using that glass as a roll in the glass a little bit there. Okay, again, I could unravel that. Oops, she said. And pop it out. So we're just building our detail around. Okay. I'm putting just I'm just putting lots of detail on here so that you can see it clearly. Okay, you don't have to add as much as this. So I'm just going to add a little bit to the top here. Again, just being I'm rolling it gently. I'm not putting any pressure on this glass because I don't want to break anything. Okay. Oops. There we go. Okay. And then, again, I'm just rolling it in there. I'm going to pop it right down here now. There you go. Doesn't matter which order you do it in. I'm just going to pop some pressure on there. There you go. You see? So now we've got the stamping. One more there. I'm rolling that in. Popping it in. Not been exact, I'm just trying to get some detail in that background. Okay. So again, we're building our layers like we did on the plate before. I'm just building layers because this will then become part of our, our design. Okay. So I'm going to give that a very, very quick dry before I do the next stage. So I'm just going to mute this too. Here we go. Hopefully you're back. <laughs> so I've dried that now. Now next bit is the antiquing part. Um, this is the bit I like. This is the bit you can do it different ways. So I'm trying to just 
C as well. There we go. So um, this is a bit now you can do it. You can do it either with paint or you can do it the way I'm going to do it. So if you've got, I um, haven't got it here, but if you've got the Cadence um, dark brown or brown colour, you could do this. Or if you've got the um, Antique uh, Copper in this one as well, or the chocolate that we had in this hy in hybrid paint, then, um, no, sorry, the gilding paint, then you could do this effect as well. What I'm going to do, though, to show you, I just really want to show you this technique. It's great. You've, you've seen my live before when I've used what we call tar paint. So I'm just using what they call an ash fountain paint. Um, just something I have in my craft stash. But again, we can do this with paints though, okay? So don't worry. So I've just got a little bit of this, what we call the ash faint, um, ash fountain paint. And all it is, is literally tar, okay? And I've added um, some um, turpentine, which is like a, a white spirit. So I've added a little bit of turpentine into that. But I've also got a jar of turpentine that I clean my brush by brushing all the time. So we use that as part of the project as well. Okay, I'm already dirty. I'm already dirty. I haven't hardly touched it. Hey, I'm happy now. So I'm just going to take dry my brush off a little. I haven't got too much turpentine on it straight away. Okay, and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to dip it into my asphalt and paint. But again, remember this could be a, a hybrid paint as well. Okay, so I have this handy today. So I'm just going to then splash some of this paint inside okay now I have one already dried for us just going to tap it down the bottom end as well okay you don't need too much now what I'm going to do is I take the ash into the turpentine here to clean my brush off but I will take a lot of that off brush that off and then when we add it now it will start to break that uh, tar down a little bit more Okay, so it completely softens the look and we get this lovely um, antique effect on our glass. Okay, you could just tap your brush. I'm doing this because it's even easier for me to tap it on the glass. <laughs> okay, so really what you're doing is you're sort of breaking that paint down inside and that is going to give us a lovely um, sort of antique wash look to it, long antique like when the glass has gone brown but again you can do this with your paints with your acrylic paints just water them down okay and then what we do with that can you see that there you go now but you can do it with um gail you can do this um with paint as well okay so don't worry so what i do then is let that dry but i tend to just dry it with the i always use a cool setting on my hair dry by the way i, I don't use a hot setting i always use a cool cool setting okay so you just let that dry, okay? And we're just going to give that a quick dry. So I'm just going to switch the mute on two seconds. Hello, there we are. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now, a little bit in the bottom there. Just going to get the excess out of the bottom there. That's all it is. And there we go. That'll do. Okay. So that's our, our glass. But if I, I'm trying to find, if I had, I did get the paint out for you. And now I've put it, I think I put it away. I don't know why I did that. That's a silly thing to do, wasn't it? But what I was going to show you is, on this so this is like the hybrids okay so if i took a little bit of the hybrid yeah and we'll just clean this brush off a little bit okay if i add a tiny bit of water just to make it a bit more fluid in the paint so this is just a hybrid now but what you could do is you could do the same effect just using your paint okay 
you're just splashing the paint around. That's all you're doing is splashing the paint. So you haven't got to do any, any dribbles you don't want to. You're just going to add, if I bring it up now, you can see oops, the oh, these light pattern now. That is your actual hybrid paints. So you can get that look just using your hybrid paints and a, and a brush, okay? Toothbrush, a brush, or you can use a fan brush. Either way, it doesn't matter. So if I'm just going to give that one quick blast again, that'll be two seconds. Just There we go. Okay. So that is how you do it. Obviously, we've used, I've shown you now as well how to use your hybrid paints to get the same sort of effect. It's a different sort of look, but it's still an antique look. And you can, I would splash. If I'm using my hybrids or my hybrid metallics, use a combination of both so you get flat and metallic. I'd use um sort of a couple of colours in the splashes. Yep, yeah, just get a couple of colours. And you could actually spritz a little bit of water and um, half dry it. And then put a bit of towel on the side and you'll get this sort of look on it, okay? So don't panic, it's really easy. There's no need to be nervous about it, but you can do it with paint as well. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to stick some decoupage on it. <laughs> and can you tell what I'm doing? I'm trying to find my decoupage because I think I might have blown it away. <laughs> Bear with two seconds. Oh no, it's next to me on the floor. There it goes, one. All right, we're getting there. Oh dear, I forgot that was on the table and I was blowing, didn't I? Oh, we've got the birds. That's okay, we'll do just the birds. I have one finished, don't worry. So, I've got my birds. I do have a clock somewhere, but I can't find that. I've blown it away. Um, but with the birds now, now, these are quite delicate as they are. And if you try to get them into here, it's quite fiddly to get them in. So what I do is, I detach them and then glue them back together inside. Okay, so we're going to use, let me pop that into there. We're going to use um, Decoupage Plus glue, because I like to use it on my glass, on my hard surfaces. Okay, now when we're doing these, I want them facing outwards. So we need to um, glue on the printer's side facing us. Okay, so you want to glue on the front side, the side you're going to see. So I'm just going to go. Can you see I'm going from the centre outwards? There we go. So I make sure I get it covered. And I do it this way and I do it onto glass because I don't want to get too much glue popping out the sides of the image onto my glass. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it in. Yeah. And I'm going to position it where I want it. And I'm pushing this down. You can use a piece of paper for this. If you've got glue in your hands, then use a piece of paper to make sure you get that really glued on. Okay. Now you can then go over a tiny bit of glue at the back, but just be careful um, you don't add too much glue. Although it, it um, dries clear, I don't like to see any marks, so I like to do it just up to the edges, not over the edge. Okay. And then the second bird, can you see the first bird now? There we go. And then the second bird, because now we tore the bird apart, and we're going to re, we're going to rejoin him inside the glass. So again, I'm going to pop the glue onto the front of the printed image. Let's pop it there so you can see. So onto the printed image. A nice coating, but even. Take off in the excess. Okay. And I'm going to lift that again. And this time, I'm going to pop it in, and I'll do my best then. Two, there you go. So we've joined the bird gap again now. So I'm just pushing that on. There we go. So we've joined it back up. So it makes it a lot easier, easier for us to put it on if we cut it in half. There we go. Again, you could go onto the back if you wanted to. There we go. 
Now I haven't, you could actually, if you want these birds to really stand out, you can paint the back with either some white acrylic or some white um, antiquing powder. And then these are really pop out, but I don't need them to pop out much on this because of the background we're going to be doing. So that's our first image on there, okay? And then I would add the clock in there as well, which I'm still trying to find because I've blown it everywhere. And the butterflies. One more last look. If not, I'll go to the one I've already dried. <laughs> oh dear, what am I like? No, butterflies have flown. They fluttered away. I don't know where they are now. <laughs> No, you get the idea. So we're going to add on another our images all the way from, all the way in, and then put our butterflies on there until, if I bring this one in, we've got this. So there we go. I've got my birds on that side. Yeah. I've added the clock on as well. I'll bring it up here so you can see. Again, exactly the same way. And then I had a couple of butterflies, so I've added those on to it as well. Yeah. So what we're going to do next then, put that there, is we're going to start adding the colour to the glass. Now I have got, I'm blowing them away as well, <laughs> I've got some cut and use. I find this part of it easy to do with some cut and use because I need to get my hand into the glass. And if you've got a, a sponge door because they've got a handle, so you can't get into the glass, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to start adding some paints on the inside of the glass. And that's going to give that gorgeous shimmer on the outside. Okay. So I'm going to pop out, pop out some of my hybrid metallic and the antique gold. Okay. I'm going to have some platinum in the Dora metallics. There you go. And I'm going to have some silver from the Dora metallics. We'll just do whoops, part of it today for you. So it's a nice, quick, easy demonstration for you today. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, doesn't matter which way you start, just take some of the paint. So I've got the little bit of the um, platinum here. I've got my sponge, I've got too much on there. And then what you're going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm just going to start dabbing, okay, just dabbing the paint around now it's great if you're gonna um because you're gonna do more than one coat normally but when we're just gonna have it as a light coat because um i want to add i want the silver to come through when we do it okay so i'm, you know, I'm not even clean my sponge now i'm going into the antique gold okay hope you can see this and i'm just dabbing the colors on okay I'm going to show you two ways you can do the inside as well because some product you may have had previously isn't available now but I know you've had it previously okay so you're just going to dab away and keep dabbing the colour where you want it I would do still do two thin coats of this okay I got fat hands it's much easier when you've got thin hands okay so just keep dabbing the colour I'm going to work my way up so you can see it better this end, okay? So I'm dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. And I'm going to take some more of the um, platinum. So you can sort of, um, I'm only really gently dabbing because I don't want to have too many square marks in it when you come. When you put the second coat on, you'll lose those anyway because you'll start building, okay? And I'm going to take some more of the gold. There we go, and I'm going to dab it. Okay, so I'm dabbing. Can you see how we're starting to get that shit, that lovely sheen in the back of it there from those gorgeous uh, metallic paints? And I'm going to keep dabbing. There we go. And I'm going to pick up some of the platinum. It's just a matter of building those colours up. Okay, so I'm just doing this sort of front piece. Okay, so you can see. Look at that. Isn't that colour lovely? Because it starts showing you up the other paints we put on on the inside. Okay, so I'm gonna take some more of the gold. I'm gonna come around here, but here we go. This is when you start building up these colors. And then you can see all the stamping comes through. So I'm not, I'm doing it randomly with the actual, with where I'm putting the color. 
because that way it just looks nice it just looked nice that way okay so again i'm not changing my sponge in between because we are blending anyway okay so just carry on blending okay can you see how it's coming along now okay and i've got quite a narrow vase here but we're still managing to do fine if you had a wide a wide neck vase i have one downstairs but I couldn't get to it to do it for you <laughs> as a finished piece, but it's beautifully large. Another thing I got on sale somewhere. <laughs> so I will do it one day into something. So there we go. I'm just taking that now. Again, adding that. Again, I'm not after a thick coat here because I want the sil the last coat, which is the silver. I want that to show. Th I want you to be able to see that. So I'm only using this as a thin covering. Okay. I'm going to go in here and around here there we go there we go okay i'm only going to do the front piece so you can so you can see um how it goes okay again i'm just coming around here now oops try not to skate it around while i'm on it i'm just trying to Dab and lift, dab and lift, so I don't get um, skid marks in it, I suppose you say. <laughs> okay, so I'll just do this top bit, it'll be easy for you to see. So once I get my hands in it, you'll get all my fingerprints and my knuckle marks in it because they'll come off. <laughs> there we go. Oops. That's just that, just doing that front piece, just to show you. Okay. So can you see how much that has changed already? Look at it, isn't that gorgeous? Really, really pretty. So again, I'm only just doing this to show you on this side. You can imagine then what it looked around the rest of the sides. And you can see there where I've put my hand in there. So I'm gonna cover that up. Cover that up. There you go, absolutely beautiful. It's such an easy technique, but it's such a beautiful finish to it. And there's another way we can do this, because we can actually do this double-sided, and I'll do that maybe another day for you, and we'll do it in and out. It looks beautiful. So I'm going to give that a quick dry. No Susan answering questions for you. So I'm just going to mute it two seconds. Here we go. Okay. So I think it's dry enough for us to move on. So what you do next, we take the silver. Okay. I'm going to show you a little bit of each on this one because I want to show you because you may have had the other product ages ago. Okay. So I'm using the silver in the Dora hybrids now. Okay. I'm just going to do this little bit of the top to show you. Okay. So I'm now going to go behind colours we've just done. I will turn it over now for you. So I'm patting it in with the silver. Okay. So again, I'm just tapping in because you can build the coats up on here. I probably do a couple of coats of this one. Okay. There we go. I'm just going to show you two different ways we can do it. Okay, so now can you see we're starting to get the silver sheen behind it? I'll do a little bit more so you can see it. So 
building that layer up so we get that silver coming behind as well. So there's another layer, so there's another colour coming through. It looks beautiful when it's done, but I say you probably need a couple of coats of the silver to get the complete coverage we want. Okay, it's going to go down here. Look at this, isn't that gorgeous? The way it just shines through, it just shimmers through the back, giving you that lovely, beautiful coating. Okay, I'm going to do this little bit here. If you can see, can I take it up there and hopefully you can see. So where we've put the silver inside, so here, yeah. Behind here now, we've got a beautiful um, silver color shining through as well. Absolutely beautiful. But what you can also do, now I'd let that dry and then add another another layer until I was happy with the coating inside. And I'd do that around the whole, in the whole vase, once we've done the whole, because I haven't finished this one. But also what you've got, if you, might, if you had the one minute Miri effect that we had on last year, I think it was, with, with um, Stephanie, then what you can do, you could use the one mirror mirror effect if you've got it, okay? Otherwise the silver, um, the platinum, sorry, the silver in the hybrid metallics works superbly it's beautiful but with this if you've got the spray all you're going to do then is just going to spray inside until you've got a covering okay you start at the bottom work your way up so i hold mine up that way to spray in the bottom because the spray doesn't work upside down okay so but can you see again you've got this gorgeous silver it's hard to see on here you've got that gorgeous silver coating inside that shines through all the gaps. That's why we only put a thin coat on so that we can actually have that silver coming through. So inside, can you see, I'm trying to get it so you can see, inside you can see where I've sprayed the silver on this side, okay? It's like a mirror spray. But really the look, if you look at it here, is the same as the look on this side with the silver with the um, Dora hybrids and silver. It's, just, it's the same sort of look. So you can do it two ways, depending on what product you've got, but the hybrid metallics do a beautiful, beautiful job of giving you the color and then giving you the finishing touch inside. So I always like to use my um, Dora hybrid metallics to do this, this touch, but I will take my time and doing the inside. Um, oops, I'm a little bit outside there. But it gives such a beautiful, beautiful antique finish. No one would look know now, looking at that, that that was a 99p beer glass. That now looks like um, an expensive, it will do its finish, this side, looks like an expensive um, vase. You know, look, it looks like an artisan piece. So, you know, they're, they're one-off. No two are ever going to be the same. If I bring in the finished one. Okay. Oops, not there, make sure they fall over. So you can see, this is the finished one now, and you can see all the silver where we've built it up inside. You can see all the bits of silver in here. And I, think, I just think it was lovely, and I've bound a piece of flowers in it, but if I'm going to use the flowers, what I always do is I would put a coat of varnish inside. Um, I would use a um, like a yacht varnish, or if you have an aquastone varnish, if you're lucky to have one of those. But I would use a, um, like a, a yacht, I would use a yachting varnish. I always do if I'm um, putting in so I actually want to use it for water. There you go. So the hybrids are um, waterproof. It's just me, I'm belts and braces. So what you must remember though is with the hybrids, and we must say this, you must let them bond to the surface. They're developed to bond to shiny surfaces without priming, but you must give them the drying time. So you must let them dry. So if I'm doing this normally, what I would do is I would get all my first coat on, yeah? I would get my first coat on, and I would actually let that dry. So I'd do that in the evening, let it dry in the day. Next day, I'd come back and do my hybrid and the silver and let that dry overnight. That way you've got 24 hours in between your coats, okay? So you must let it cure on the glass. It needs to bond, okay? So what it is with paints is sometimes you'll paint something, you'll think, feel it's dry on top, but the paint underneath isn't dry. And that's what always, you know, people tend to ruin their pieces if not careful. So always give it time to dry and you'll get a perfect, perfect finish. That is then, um, you know, you can do a light wash too. And it's actually an amazing product, it really is. So I'm gonna come back up. I oh, am yeah, back again. Sorry, I said it'd be quick today. Sorry. 
I'm not 100%, I'm sorry today. <laughs> so, um, but look at that. I mean, the finish on there, on there, with the um, hybrid metallics, and that is just a 99p beer glass. A couple of bits of rice paper, a bit, bit of stamping. Um, I find the stamping's easier because obviously it's hard to get your stencils in there, but a stamping with some stays on ink, the permanent ink, um, but perfect. You could stamp with hybrids as well. I'm going to say that. You can stamp with hybrids, so you could actually do that with hybrids as well. Um, but you must let them dry. Obviously, heat, make sure it's dry before you put in your paint on top. But again, look at that. So you've got a cheap, cheap jar. Could be a jar, could be a vase, could be anything. Or even glasses. Imagine that as a really posh wine glass. It'd look quite nice, wouldn't it? Well, I don't drink wine, but <laughs> it's just not nice anyway. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it's um, inspired you to try it. Um, remember, if you've got your, um, your dark metallics, um or your hybrid flat ones you can do this sort of effect using those paints as well okay so it's just i have to have that in my my crafting stash so well i hope you enjoyed that sorry it was a short and sweet today <laughs> but you've got the technique i think hopefully you have a go and hopefully share it with our page with us we'd love to see them we really do um so i'm i'm off to get my pjs on <laughs> i'm off to get my pjs on um have a fantastic evening. Um, I will see you next Sunday. And next Sunday we're doing, um, I've got, I haven't got it, it's next door actually, I haven't had it delivered yet. Um, we're going to do a paint effect. So we're going to change something. Um, I've got this um, sort of Buddha wall plaque and we're going to change the paint effect. So we're going to be using um, different products we use antique and powders we use maybe rusty patinas as well so we're going to use that and change the look of it so again it's something you can do and play with all your products so i hope you can join me for that and i'll um yeah i'll put it up very soon because i know what we're doing next week okay i know what we're doing makes a change but we know so have a fantastic evening stay safe uh see you next week and take care and enjoy yourself okay now bye now <laughs>